I think, uh, I think history can uh, really help inform us uh, what has worked and what hasn't worked, and uh, more importantly, what we should be mindful of. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, pitfalls uh, out there, and uh, we want to obviously tackle these problems as, uh, most, as effectively as we can. I don't think we can ever do enough to respond to what are huge humanitarian crises and what are huge um, security challenges. I mean, uh, the rise of extremists in, uh, in Syria, uh, the, the, the scale of the conflict in, in Syria are, uh, are incredible. I don't think the responsibility to protect though meant that uh, every time there was a crisis that there would be a military response. Well, I think we tried in a big way. Obviously, uh, our institutions have failed us. The Security Council uh, has been unable to uh, grapple successfully uh, with what's gone on in Syria for more than uh, three and a half years uh, now. Uh, so that's a, a huge challenge. So we've had to try to respond uh, to the, uh, the humanitarian uh, challenge. Canada's been certainly a big, uh, big proponent and a big leader by example of providing aid to uh, the victims of Assad. Yeah, we've taken a huge number, particularly of Christian Iraqis yeah. who have been uh, fleeing persecution. Uh, religious freedom, promoting pluralism, uh, is obviously a, a centerpiece of our, uh, of our foreign policy and, you know, frankly, of uh, the kind of country that we've built. Well, listen, we, I think we, we settled about 10% of uh, designated refugees. Uh, uh, we've obviously uh, been a leader by example uh, and we'll continue, obviously, to do, uh, to do our part. At the same time, we, we want to we see uh, an inclusive, pluralistic uh, Iraqi society built. Uh, where Christians can live alongside Muslims, be they uh, Shia, Sunni, can uh, live in peace and harmony with, uh, uh, with Kurds and, uh, and others. Uh, that's, uh, that's the vision that we have uh, for the world. These problems exist in Europe. Uh, they exist on the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, you know, there have been uh, Canadians who have uh, you know, even converted, uh, radicalized, and uh, gone to fight, and this is obviously uh, a shared concern that, uh, that uh, Canadians have with, uh, with uh, others in the United States and across the Atlantic and Europe. Um, we've even seen you know, Canadians who've uh, been born in uh, Asia, uh, you know, immigrated to Canada, converted, radicalized, and then fought. Uh, so this is a, a huge challenge facing uh, Western civilization. I don't know if we're any better or worse than, uh, than Europe. Uh, we're very open society that uh, has welcomed immigrants. Uh, I think increasingly though, uh, we speak to Canadian values um, and uh, we push these more. That if you want to come to Canada and make it your home, you've got to buy into Canadian values, which are uh, human rights, freedom, um, you know, pluralism, the, the equality of men and women, for example. Uh, these, are, uh, these are pretty important and uh, they're not up for negotiation. Uh, with the United States, there's probably uh, no two countries in the world who share such a long border, who work so well together. Uh, we obviously uh, value our sovereignty, we value uh, Canadian culture, our national identity, uh, and work through a number of avenues to uh, promote and protect that. I have come a long way in my three and a half years as Foreign Minister. We think the EU, uh, certainly on foreign policy, is a powerful force for good uh, in the world. Uh, they've been a great partner uh, for Canada. Uh, we're tremendously excited about trade liberalization with the Canada-Europe uh, trade agreement. Uh, which by lowering barriers will make uh, our economy stronger and create a lot of jobs on both sides uh, uh, of the Atlantic. So uh, we're, uh, we're strong supporters of, uh, of the EU, uh, both in terms of trade and in terms of foreign affairs and security.